This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. What happens to you when your body dies? What happens between lives? How do you gain closure after your loved ones pass? Are you searching for evidence of the spirit world? Psychic medium and best-selling author Chris Lippincott shares the vast knowledge he has gained from years of study and hundreds of his mediumship readings and offers clear evidence that the spirit realm is much closer than we realize. Chris shares his remarkable journey into mediumship, describes what the other side is like, and offers remarkable readings and healing messages he has been privileged to convey that have been life-transforming for the recipients. His inspiring work clearly describes that not only do we survive our physical death, but more importantly, that the bonds of love between the two worlds are eternal. Valeria Tellez interviews Chris Lippincott, the author of The Spirits Beside Us, Gain Healing and Comfort from Loved Ones in the Afterlife. Chris Lippincott is a practicing psychic medium and best-selling author whose evidential readings and unique information from spirit helps transform people's lives. Through his mediumship, Chris provides comfort, healing, and knowledge that our loved ones in spirit are alive and well and still care about us. Chris has trained with some of the world's most well-respected mediums, including James Van Prague, Tony Stockwell, Martin Twycross, Reverend Janet Nohavec, Andy Bing, Joseph Siegel, and Lee Van Zyl. Chris discovered that his passion is providing comfort, healing, and the knowledge that our loved ones in spirit are alive and well and still care about us. Meet Chris at MontclairMedium.com. Here is the interview with Chris Lippincott. In your own words, who is Chris Lippincott? Who is Chris Lippincott? Well, I'm a uh, psychic medium and best-selling author. And I love reuniting people with their loved ones who now are in spirit because it allows people to really not only connect with those people whom they miss dearly, but also allows them to learn lessons about life. But it also, furthermore, is the final capability to allow spirit to come through and help us to really transform those who are in need. And it's really, it, it's healing to those people who are receiving the messages, but it's also healing to everybody who's involved with them, including me. And, and it's a, and it's a, it, it's a passion. It's, it's a, it's a love of, of doing this work to, to help people heal and to help uh, spirit as well. My first question for you, it had to be this one. What is healing to you? <laughs> <laughs> what is healing? Uh, it's a great question. Healing is helping people to not only allow their own grief to perhaps be alleviated to some degree, but also to expand their own knowledge of the fact that we're not just only here in the physical, but that we in fact are souls that live on throughout the eternity. It's the, it's, it's the consciousness that uh, survives the physical death. And it's sort of the awakening, if you will, 
uh, of that knowledge and the, 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 the new knowledge that people awaken to helps them heal as they realize that their loved ones are still quite alive. They just happen to be in a different room, if you will, different reality, a different dimension. And they begin to understand that. And that knowledge itself is so healing. And when spirit comes through, they begin to feel that, know that, and it's this transformational love that ultimately is the healing that comes through. And spirit is nothing but pure love that comes through to help them to heal. So when you say knowledge, would you replace that word with knowing? It's a certain knowing that comes through uh, spirit's evidence that they provide to uh, the recipient when the recipient receives the information uh, that's very unique and very specific and pieces of information that only those two people would know uh, or furthermore uh, pieces of information that the loved one who is now in spirit could never have known because they're providing information that they saw after they passed. That kind of information that comes through then shows the person who's still in the physical that, in fact, their loved one is quite alive because they're seeing everything unfold. Quite often I'll have uh, times where maybe a husband comes through to a wife and says, darling, I, I loved the memorial service you gave me and goes on to describe everything about the memorial service. And I pass that information on to the to the wife and she's absolutely floored and loves the fact that her husband's coming through again. And, you know, that kind of thing happens all the time. Right. So in a way, it doesn't have to be a no way. Uh, it can also be a knowledge, like you say. That, that's interesting. Received information, right? Yeah, it's received information. It's it's the knowledge. It's the understanding. It's the showing. It's the uh, the proof of survival that comes through. Uh, and when the recipient begins to understand this, as all the information flows through, they see it unfold before them, and they then have an internal knowledge. Would that lead to trust as well, Chris? Yes, absolutely. Because then they understand that there is more to life than we can understand in the physical, than we can understand from what our eyes see. We learn that, in fact, we should learn to trust more than what we can see with our physical eyes. But we should learn to trust our instinct, trust our senses, trust that feeling that might be coming from somewhere else. Trust the energy that's out there. Trust that loving pull that's come, that's, that is pulling us in a certain direction that we know we should really be doing something, but we're kind of reluctant to do it because we're only human. That, that, that uh, trust that we know we should be loving other people, that trust that we know we should help other people, but we're just kind of <laughs> lackadaisical sometimes. Yeah, it's so true. So we do need that knowledge that you speak of. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And I agree. We are discussing today topics from your book, Spirits Beside Us, Gain Healing and Comfort from Loved Ones in the Afterlife. So my next question is about spirit. It's interesting how you don't say the spirit, you just use the word spirit. What, where, and who is spirit? Mm, good question. Spirit, I guess, is the collective of all spirits that exist in the afterlife. Uh, when I uh, refer to spirit, it's really more of uh, all the uh, totality of all the spirits that exist uh, throughout the afterlife. You may contrast that with the capitalized the spirit, which could be referred to as the divine source, uh, the great spirit. Uh, some refer to that as God. Some refer to that as the higher energy, etc. So there are different uh, levels, if you will, uh, energy states, perhaps. So when I refer to as uh, spirit, lowercase s, um, and in the singular, it's actually the collective of all the spirits that exist out there. Yeah. And the, speaking about the collective and this one spirit, 
I have a question about some words you use in your book, spirit within. That's one term. And then you have been speaking about loved ones, people who have passed away or meaning they're just here still, but we can uh, see them. What is the difference between the spirit within and the spirit that lives on? Mm, That's a great question. Um, The spirit within is something that uh, what I'll refer to as all spirits have been trying to get us to understand uh, that truly exists. Because in fact, we are all spirit. We just happen to be aware of the physical pieces of our body. If you want to get into quantum physics, all existence is actually energy. All existence is actually empty space. There really is no matter in quote unquote. So we are all energy, just like spirit is energy. Spirit just happens to be at a higher vibration state as opposed to us in the physical that are in a lower vibration state, more materialistic. But we all have energy in it, and it's that energy within the physical body. We just happen to be uh, the spirits temporarily wearing a physical shell. So the spirit within is the spirit that ultimately will flow to the higher vibration spirit realm after the physical body dies. So if you w- if you want to put it in another way, you can think of the spirit within sheds the raincoat of the physical body and then goes on to another dimension, another reality uh, where it no longer needs to wear that raincoat because we're all spirits. We're just mm-hmm. wearing different raincoats. Mm-hmm, you know, right. so, some of us are wearing tan raincoats. Some of mm-hmm. us are wearing brown raincoats, all kinds. It's, it's just uh-huh. think of it in, you know, in terms of that. Yeah, that's fascinating. This um, understanding that we are just having an experience here in a human body. And that makes me wonder who made that choice and how did this experiment started? So when you refer to as uh, who made the choice to, as in who made the choice to come into the body? Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's, that's a uh, wonderful way to, to begin the whole conversation of the, the journey of the spirit. Because the journey of the spirit, uh, especially the spirit within, begins at the point where we're uh, thinking about our entire spirit journey, soul journey, soul plan that we uh, work with so difficultly and so, so intently with our guides and advisors in the spirit world. We try to set up lessons for ourselves, experiences that we want to learn, ways that we want to grow. Because ultimately, it's all about how can we grow? How can we expand our spiritual knowledge base, if you will, so that when we finally do incarnate in the physical with our new uh, raincoat, that we're going to learn different experiences. We're going to have different lessons because the lesson plan that we have stated for ourselves when we come down is to learn all these different lessons, to learn all these different experiences. And if you want to think about it from the perspective of school, we're all down here on the earth school and we're all uh, in different grades. And each time we incarnate, it's like we've gone to a different grade. And in every grade, every year, we're learning a different set of lessons. And the only way you can really experience uh, new lessons is by undergoing the tough lessons, undergoing the tough experiences. I guess you could liken it very much to telling a four-year-old not to touch the stove that's mm-hmm. that's really hot, and he's not going to listen to you. But if you allow that four-year-old to actually touch the hot stove, he won't ever do it again. He'll remember that experience, and he'll learn from it. And that also makes me wonder if this being a human body is the most challenging experience for us. I would have to say it probably is because all of the challenges that we undergo every single day, uh, we all think to ourselves, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this, this mm-hmm. life is so hard. Oh, I hate this life. All the things we're, I mean, look, look at life that's going on right now today. Yeah. All the things that are going on and we're all bemoaning this and that and oh, what a catastrophic mm-hmm. world we're existing in. Yeah. Well, guess what? All the challenges that we have every single day, that's a lesson. We're learning from our challenges. Cha- every, look at every challenge, not as a challenge, but as a lesson to learn from. 
So every day we're actually learning things that we wouldn't have learned otherwise. Certainly can't, you know, learn those challenges in the afterlife because it's not very challenging there, is it? You, it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite nice here. It's quite difficult. So I would have to say that we're here specifically to learn those lessons. And that's why we come down here to such a difficult, challenging existence. What is freedom to you, Chris? What is to be free, finally? Mm, what is freedom? I guess you could say freedom is even in the eye of the beholder. Mm, uh, yeah. Freedom really is allowing yourself to be free with your thoughts, be free with your own spirit and allowing yourself to flow along your entire journey. If you know that at one point you are able to live your entire spirit journey without interruption and you know that this entire journey that you're undergoing is something that you want to expand, you're going to be free to, 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 to live it. And you really want to uh, allow that experience to unfold because so many people are so set in their ways and they don't want to, you know, vary from their path that they can't allow themselves to be free. But if you just allow yourself to unfold, to learn that you are a spirit and to grow with spirit and to accept the information that you begin to feel, then you feel yourself growing and that's freedom itself. Talk to me for a moment about the, um, how the spirit world is organized. In your book, you mentioned spirit's path, that they are three paths. Talk to me about them, the uh, development of the intellect, purification of human love, and then the, um, I think you called God's divine love, developing the relationship with what you call God. Right. Uh, the, the, if you want to look at it from a structural perspective, from what we have been told over the last 150 years in many, I should say thousands of uh, different automatic writings, spirits that have come uh, you know, to different mediums and allowed uh, their books, if you will, to come through to these mediums. Uh, and even in readings, they'll come through and you know, it's happened to me. I'll, I'll, I've done automatic writing too, and it's, it's, it's fascinating. But over the last 150 years, we've had such libraries of information that comes through. And what we've learned is that the spirit world is structured essentially with seven different spheres. And every sphere uh, that ha is higher than the next is that much more energetically charged. Uh, the, the spheres are very much like Russian nesting dolls in that uh, one encompasses the next one, which encompasses the next one, etc. And that it's very much that the, the, the higher the vibration, the higher the charge, the higher the energy. In that regard, your uh, higher vibration state, your higher uh, energy being um, – and there's that much more love. There's that much more understanding. There's that much more awareness. Uh, in many of the cases, uh, all these uh, states uh, where you've got higher vibration existence, there's also that much uh, brighter energy. Um, and the, the paths that spirit will follow to get to these higher levels typically will follow one of three paths. One uh, will be a path of knowledge where they are trying to uh, learn everything they possibly can learn uh, from, a, from a human knowledge or a spiritual knowledge. What, what, what types of knowledge can you learn? Very much like scientists uh, or mathematicians. So you really want to learn just pure knowledge for the sake of knowledge. And in many cases, it's that knowledge that uh, when they – have learned new information, they will pass that down to us through the means of inspiration. Um, it's, it's, it's even through uh, musical knowledge. And perhaps they might have uh, learned different types of music, different types of chords, different types of ways of putting things together. 
or it could even be scientific knowledge. And it'll come through to scientists. It'll come through to artists. It'll come through uh, the different uh, you know, musical symphonies like Mozart at eight, uh, what have you. And it's just this 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 types of knowledge that, that they're seeking. Uh, a second type of path would be what I would refer to as the golden rule. Just essentially do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's 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 love, but it's not even spiritual love or godly love or human love. It's more being kind um, and loving to other people. What can you do to help other people uh, so that they are can be that much more loving to the next person, and that that energy carries on to the you know and so on and so forth. And then the third type of uh, path would be uh, very much of a spiritual path. Ultimately, it's about divine love. Can you not only learn to receive the great spirit's divine love, but how can you escalate your own knowledge of how you can receive that divine love? And that's really the what I'll refer to as the celestial heaven, because once you get to that level, you're receiving the divine love from the great spirit. And that's where many of the uh, great masters uh, that we've known throughout history ultimately wind up as they follow that path and they've gone to the celestial heavens. Sometimes I wonder if these path or these, what we call evolution, is just our own creation, the mind creating all this to experience itself so it can know consciousness or get as close as possible to experiencing itself. So in the end, everything's really an illusion. It's a dream. It is. And that's, 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 a, that's a great point because so many times spirit comes through uh, and tries to remind us that everything that we are living in this instant is really an illusion. We are actually living a dream. And many times spirit has come through to say that we are actually in a dream. The reality is in fact of the spirit world because we humans look at our reality as the beyond and all, yet we believe it to be a duality uh, and separation. We think we're all separate from each other. We think uh, all physical objects are separate from each other, and we think uh, we're dual in that we are separate from the great spirit. In fact, as quantum physics has already been pointing out, that there is no duality. It's all unity. In fact, we are all one. We are all from the same material, whether you want to look at it scientifically, like we're all from stardust because we're all made from the same material, uh, or if you want to look at it, that we're all energy because, in fact, we are all energy. That quantum physics has already proven quite readily. Uh, or even to the point where we are all ultimately the highest uh, vibration energy, we are all love. And as being all energy, being love, once we get to uh, the spirit world, that's when spirit has said after transition, they awake and they feel like they've been uh, in a dream because now it's more like all of a sudden they're able to wake up, everything's much more vivid, the sounds are more vivid, the yeah. colors are more vivid, they can actually see things that, and hear things they didn't know existed before, and they're, they, they feel awake all of a sudden, whereas before they felt like they were asleep. So right. what has come through so many times is that uh, even when I've, when I've been doing uh, trance meditations, sometimes uh, guys will come through to me and talk to people in front of me and say, all oh, those of you who are awake, it is your responsibility to begin to awaken those that still sleepwalk. And it's the sleepwalkers where we all think that, uh, you know, it's duality and separation. We're still asleep to the reality that's out there. That's interesting what you said about after we lose the body, that's when we somehow realize that we were dead actually before. <laughs> 
So knowing now that we're already dead might just uh, uh, remove all the fear, right, Chris, in a way. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's when, when, we, when we begin to realize that there is no quote-unquote death, it's just a transition from one state to another state that, in fact, it's something to you could you could make the argument in fact that it's actually something to look forward to that that here we are in this really drab place with uh, all these challenges that are really bumming us out and oh gosh we don't get to even experience all the beautiful vivid colors and the, and the and the vivid sounds and all the incredible you know love that's out there especially in the spirit world and that other dimension gosh wouldn't it really be kind of nice to to be there <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to tell people to say, "Hey, listen, you know, you got you got to end your life." No, <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. I am saying, you know, it, it, it makes the argument for it. Yeah, just to live. I think that it might be joy. Once we start understanding that, they will become a lot more appreciative and grateful. Yeah, there's yeah, and that's why there's no reason to fear <laughs> passing. On the contrary. So, have you lost the fear of losing the body? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I I feel that I'm always involved with the spirit world twenty four seven, and and it's just it's it's an amazing thing because I'm always in contact with spirit when I'm working with my clients. I'm always aware uh, of the spirit world as I reflect on it, and, and it's just this knowledge in my mind that I know that I'm in a place where I'm learning and undergoing you know, a, a harsh reality because I'm in, I'm in school as it were, but I know that, Hey, you know, after, you know, once summer vacation rolls around, it's time to party, right? <laughs> yeah. That sounds really good. And I love the way you said in my mind. So the mind, it might be the, Oh yeah. That needs to understand. Cause yeah, exactly. the heart, it's all it the mind. mind is a powerful thing. It is, isn't it? The more I talk about the mind and kind of do some observations myself, my own processes. It's fascinating how there's nothing that's real really about all these thoughts. Like, yeah, it's interesting. You to can see create that. that's and that's that's the whole thing, is that the mind can create anything that it wants to. And psychiatrists psychiatrists have, have been talking about this for eons now. And it, it, whether we're talking about, you know, psychology, psychiatry, uh, your the therapy, it's it's even true in the spirit world that in the spirit world, they've uh, taught us that the mind is so powerful that thoughts become things and they'll, they're able to create things just using their mind because everything that exists can exist. And what they try to get us to understand is that if we were only able to understand how powerful our thoughts are, we could change the world, except it's all in self-limiting belief. We all have these self-limiting beliefs that prevent us from doing this or that. So what inspired you to become a psychic medium? But before you answer that question, Chris, what is the difference between psychics and mediums? Great question. Uh, the difference between psychics and mediums is that you may have heard the phrase, all mediums are psychic but not all psychics are mediums. And that really refers to the equation psychic plus power equals medium. And by that, I mean, we all have psychic senses. You know, we all have a gut instinct. We all know that, you know, we've got some kind of intuition there. We all have that uh, time when we think to ourselves, oh gosh, I think I should probably bring that umbrella because I have a gut instinct that's going to rain. Nah, we go off and then it comes back and we get you know soaked by because it rains, right? We all get that instinct. We you know we could meet somebody, shake their hand, and in an instant know what they're like. So we've all got that the the those senses. We've all got the psychic senses. Now a psychic is able to use those psychic senses to a high degree, uh, but the psychic will read another human on this level, on this plane. So it's a one-to-one, -one, human to human. Uh, that's where they're really reading the energy. Um, now, a medium takes those same psychic senses, the same ability, the same development, but then harnesses spiritual energy to be able to communicate and read the energy that's coming from spirit. So if you want to look at it, 
on an on a on a grid, a psychic would be reading horizontally on the floor from person to person. You know, let's say you've got a, a sitter literally sitting on the the you know, the, the, the floor. Okay. The psychic is on the floor and he's reading the person on the floor. The medium would also be on the floor. That medium could also read the sitter, but he could read the spirit up in the sky, if you will, up vertically. So it goes does both. That's the difference between a medium and a psychic. A, a psychic would not be able to read uh, spirit because he doesn't have the spiritual power. And the spiritual power comes by sitting in the power, being open to spirit, being uh, aware of your own inner spirit. And it, and it takes time to start to hear that and feel that and become aware of it and really open yourself to it. So that explains the difference. So knowing your own spiritual power, your own, the power of your own spirit. Right? Exactly. That's, that's really the, the, the big one and, and who you're able to uh, read. Now, as far as what inspired me to follow uh, my path, it it's interesting because when I was young, I was aware of spirit, but I just didn't really know what they were trying to do. I, I was aware of spirit, uh, thinking that they were just playmates. Yeah, uh, you know, I was young, ha- you know, hanging out, and you know, we were having a lot of fun, and I was, you know, talking to them, and they were occupying my time. I should have recognized something was different when they were talking back to me and I was having full on conversations, <laughs> but right. I thought that was my imagination, right? <laughs> so that goes on to I'm probably around, I don't know, uh, you know, seven or eight. And also I was hearing voices in my bedroom. I'd feel hands on my back. I'd feel energy around my entire body. So, it, you know, of course, when the sun went down, I thought monsters were coming out of my mm-hmm. bed. Oh, so you know, I was rather yeah. scared. <laughs> and at that point, I started to get, not only was I getting scared, but also I started getting too logical and materialistic. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is a bunch of hogwash, silliness, blah, 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 blah. So I suppressed it for about, what, you know, 30-ish years, give or take. Um, and I, be, you know, I go off my merry ways being a logical, materialistic adult. Um, I get into uh, finance and get totally stressed out. And I figure, okay, well, I've got to find a way to really de-stress. I run into uh, meditation, learn meditation is a really cool thing, finally figure out how to do it. And I start doing it for about 12 months. And at the end of 12 months, after meditating every single day for about 15, 20 minutes every single day, uh, there was one weekend where I was in my man cave, you know, every man's got to have a man cave, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good idea. Um, yeah. I'm in my man cave and yeah. I'm doing my meditation. I'm probably 30 minutes in or so. I'm really deep into the meditation. Next thing I know, in my mind's eye, there are these four spirit beings that uh, appear in my mind's eye. Uh, and the one all the way to the right, I can still remember this, was just really a big energy and sent this beam of energy all the way through my chest, out my back. And I could feel its intense heat and power and and everything about me and which immediately told me, well, I'm not dreaming. So this has got to be real. So something's happening and I don't, but I don't know what. And all of a sudden I just felt this immense feeling of being out of my body, being in this vast sphere of nothingness and everything this at the same time, but it was this immense feeling of love. I was love. I was surrounded by love and love was all in existence everywhere and within me at the same time simultaneously. That's where I really was starting to realize love, you know, everything is unity. And it was just an in, in, in intense feeling that that spirit's there. And finally, I realized something's going on. Soon after that experience, that's when the floodgates opened again. All of a sudden, I'm talking to spirit. I'm you know, talking to my deceased relatives. I'm talking to all these other people. I'm feeling all the, you know, and sensing things, hearing things, doing things. It's like, yeah, I couldn't shut the door anymore. I'm like, well, I got to go explore this. And the, for about 25 years, I'd been, you know, for some reason, fascinated 
by all the you know metaphysical books, everything from NDEs to mediums to spirits and you know you name it, I read every single book that had ever been written. I don't know why, but spirit clearly was like you know <laughs> putting breadcrumbs in front of me and having me eat the breadcrumbs, and I'm just going down this path merrily without a clue. But they were biding their time, and I get this impression that they were sort of you know trying to get me ready to be kind of like an ambassador for them you know, here I am. I'm going, what? wait a second, you want me? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just this regular dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I know you had a lot of teachers, you call them, mentors, other mediums that you mentioned in the book. But I have another question for you. It seems to me like a lot of these opening experiences to spirit, as you call it, it comes a lot from challenges from suffering. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I, I would say every single light worker that has ever walked the face of the earth has been a, a, a light worker because they not only have needed healing in some way, shape, or form, but it's also the knowledge of what it n- means to need healing because you have to go through that experience in order to know what it's like to be on the other side. In order to heal somebody, you got to know what it's like to need healing. And I think that's why all light workers, in some way, shape, or form, have been have undergone these experiences where they've, you know, had trauma in their life. Yeah. The question I have for you about suffering especially is losing people we love that we attach to in, in this reality. Do you think that this might be the most challenging kind of pain and suffering? It could very well be because I know I you know, lost every single family member I had before I was, what, 30, I guess. Um, and at the time, I didn't really think much of it. But as I look back on it, it's really one of the things amongst many other things, because there were <laughs> there were so many other things. I mean, you know, whose life is normal? There is no such thing. But uh, <laughs> we're all messed up humans. Um, that's kind of part, that's the human condition. We're all messed up. But uh, I, clearly a big part of it is the fact that, you know, I lost all my family members uh, through my life before the age of 30. And just undergoing that and, and experiencing that soon after that had happened, that's eventually when you know, the machinery, if you will, began to crank. And the spirit said, all right, he's ripe. Pick him off the vine. <laughs> yeah. So can anyone become a psychic or medium, Chris? Or oh, this is a, a unique gift to some of us. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an important uh, question. I would make the argument that anybody can be a medium, anybody can be a psychic, because we all have the gifts, we all have the senses, and it's very much like playing a piano. You know, you can sit down, anybody can sit down at a, at a piano and, you know, punch out the, uh, the, you know, the keys and make pretty sounds. But you got two factors to work with. There are going to be some people who have uh, talent that's closer to the surface that is going to enable you to progress faster. So you could take two people, both of whom want to go to Carnegie Hall and play the piano, but there's going to be one person who might get there a little faster because he's got that talent closer to the surface. They might be equal in passion and equal in desire. Uh, but it's the, it's the underlying talent. Conversely, if you've got similar talent, but one person's more passion, you know, has more passion and, and desire and stick to that person may be able to get there faster. So it's, it's really sort of a, you could look at it from a, a mathematical equation or a function or a grid, if you will, and, and say it's, it's th- these pieces that are going to uh, contribute to it. So if you have more talent, it's going to take you less time. If you have less talent, it's going to take you more time and effort. It's kind of think of it that way. You speak of transformative love. I love those two words together. Would that be the same as unconditional love? 
Probably not. Unconditional love would come from a point of loving an individual regardless of what that individual had ever done, is doing, ever will do. It's similar to a parent's love. When a, when a parent picks up their brand new baby, that parent is going to sacrifice their own life for that baby. That is unconditional love. It's the same with you know, the uh, divine source. That's unconditional love. No matter what we do, the creator is going to love us unconditionally because we are children of the creator. The creator made us. We're like the baby being held by the parent. The creator loves us unconditionally. Transformational love is love from spirit that comes down to help us transform ourselves, uh, get over our grief, heal. It's healing. You might replace the word transformative with healing. It could be, you could call it healing love, if you will. Perhaps that's another way of saying it. Going back to the unconditional love state of being, do you think it is realistic and possible to love unconditionally while being a human body? I would say if you're talking about loving another human being who's not your relative, right. Hmm. Right. Right. Uh, loving unconditionally would probably be extremely hard not impossible, but extremely hard just based on our human biases, our human mindset, our human frailties where we all, uh, it's our ego mind, I would, I would say, probably would get in the way and prevent us from loving unconditionally. And that's the, the state of humanity is our ego gets in the way of just about everything. So true. It's going to be us. It's going to be us, you know, us. How do, and that's really where the separation concept comes in. You know, we were talking about separation and duality. We think that we're separate from everybody else. And that's our ego mind that gets in the way. You know, you could get into psychology about this, but that's really the, the crux of the matter. So when it comes to loving ourselves unconditionally, is that possible? Well, I'm, I know a lot of people who do love themselves unconditionally, but we won't talk about them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so this is a different idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a different idea. Yeah, of but, unconditional love, right? And so what is unconditional love? Loving oneself unconditionally to you, what would that be, Chris? To love yourself unconditionally would be to accept one's frailties for what they are and to really allow yourself to know that you are perfect, to know that nothing you do is wrong because you are just going along with everything that you have been given, going along with everything that in fact you have mapped out for yourself in advance, going along with everything that you started out with and, and you're at every place you're heading to. So it is possible, absolutely, to love yourself unconditionally if you realize that any problems that you perceive as human failures are not human failures. They're just more pieces of the puzzle where you're learning and we're all learning. So spirituality, this is something that we talk a lot about. We use that word. So do you see a difference between spirituality and religion? Absolutely. Spirituality is the individual relationship with a higher power. It's a, a, a one person's one-on-one -on -one individual relationship with the creator, whatever you want to refer to it as, it, it, it's a, a power greater than oneself. Religion, on the other hand, is an institutionalized, formal dogma, creed that is set for an entire group that an entire group has decided to follow and is man-made. Religion is man-made. Spirituality is individual, if that makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense to me. And this is um, how most people describe these two ideas. 
So we're almost at the end and I have lots of questions for you here. So I'll try to (laughs) pick some of them. At this time, given the challenges and everything that happened this year, do you feel that the power of the Spirit is manifesting itself through messages and what kinds of messages and how is the Spirit being manifested at this time? Absolutely. It's definitely coming out. In fact, uh, they have come out uh, in uh, trance um, readings specifically about what's been happening. Uh, There was one reading I can recall where a spirit came through, I think it was a spirit guide came through and was talking specifically about some of the topics we were talking about, about uh, the separation saying that humankind has gotten to such a degree where we are so separate and we are so divided and we have gotten so far away from the concept of unity uh, and one love that we no longer can exist at this point. And in fact, one of the reasons that COVID had been I don't want to say inspired or caused by, more like allowed perhaps, uh, was as a challenge to bring humanity together to support itself, to learn what it means to be in the same existence, to learn how to love one another again, to no longer be separate and apart from everybody else, but to say, hey, you know, we got to come together on this thing and we got to work together on this thing and we got to learn to love each other. Otherwise we're no longer going to be in existence. And spirit came together and said in this reading, this is the challenge for humanity. And this is why we have brought this forward is to present humanity the challenge. We believe that humanity can overcome this. We believe that humanity can uh, learn to love itself again, but it was all about the separation and duality that uh, had concerned spirit so deeply that I mean, everything we're looking at, whether you're looking at, uh, you know, COVID-19 or you know, political strife or uh, war, you name it, it, it. This has been some of the most turbulent times in the last 30, 40 years. Do you have a vision for a new reality? I think definitely that spirit has been coming through the veil more and more and more and trying to get to as many people on the planet as possible to become more aware of the reality of uh, unity and the reality of spiritual love. And, you know, people kind of get all weirded out by the concept of spiritual love. They're like, oh, I, I don't like that term. That's just too, you know, hokey for me. Think about it in the easy term. Think about it by just being nice. Go back mm-hmm. to your golden rule and say, hey, open the door for somebody. Hey, pick up the newspaper for your neighbor. Hey, buy a cup of coffee for the guy behind you in, in the coffee shop. Hey, how about making a, somebody smile? How about waving at the guy next to you? Just be nice for God's sake. That's all it requires. And can you imagine if every single person did that to one other person every day? We'd live in a completely different world. So we're almost at the end. And um, let me ask you this question. Talk to me for a moment about readings, how you do the readings. Do you do it online? And mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, these days, definitely doing it online, which I hadn't expected to actually be uh, quite so amazing. Um, and I say that because while I always knew spirit, was non-physical and they would come through. (laughs) What it's enabled me to do is take my client base and my uh, ability to contact other people around the world. It's gone global. So now I'm doing readings for people in India, people in England, people in Australia. I mean, it's everywhere all of a sudden. I'm like, my gosh, can you imagine if this had not happened? And I'd still be in my, you know, little house here and people wanted to stop by or I'd drive over to them and be all local. But no, we don't have to leave our houses. We can go around the globe. It's great. And all of a sudden I can reach to so many people now. 
Uh, yeah, I do have a, a few more questions for you. But before I ask them, would you like to add anything or read a passage in your book? I would say that the most important part of our understanding is learning that we not only are spirit within our physical bodies, but that we are surrounded at all times by the spiritual dimension that is not more than several inches away from us. Everybody thinks that, oh, the spirit world is off in the clouds and we, it's out of touch, it's out of reach, which couldn't be further from the truth. Spirit is around us at all times. Our loved ones are around us almost 24-7, depending on who you're, uh, you want to talk to. If you need to talk to somebody, they're right there with you. They can hear you. They can feel you. They know you. So when everybody is thinking, oh, I'm so sad that my dear departed is so far away and I can't communicate with them, that's just not accurate. They can communicate with you and you can communicate with them and they do all the time. Is there a specific way of doing that, Chris, or we can just do it our own way? It's really what's in your heart because mm. it, it's, it's, our, it's our thoughts and it's our heartfelt uh, feelings, whether it's spoken or unspoken, spirit will definitely hear what you have to say. Because again, spirit is energy. Spirit is thought dimension. It's all telepathy. And by that, they know what you're thinking. They know what you're feeling. They know what you're undergoing. They know your love. They can feel it just the way we can feel them. There have been so many people who have had these beautiful experiences where their loved ones have come back to them and held them or touched them or caressed them or anything to that state. It's, it, it, and, it's just, and, it's, and it's the knowledge that they're right there. So we can feel them both emotionally and physically. And I'm wondering how we learn to lose the fear. That was my case and when I lost somebody. And I remember like having that feeling that he was there, but then I was afraid. I became afraid. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And the fear arised. So I'm wondering how can we learn to deal with the fear? I think the dealing with the fear you learn through knowing that your loved one is always there and knowing that they love you as much as you love them because that's what lives on. That's what's the essence. Their essence is pure love. There's nothing else that you would ever worry about because remember the spirit world is created with a fabric, the tapestry that it's connected with a thread of love. The entire entity is connected with a thread of love. Spirit is love. And so it's the highest vibration in existence. So when spirit comes to us, spirit's coming from a place of love. And you're never going to lose that because it's, it's like the light of a star. Science has proven that even after a star has died long, 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 long ago, time ago, the light that it has been emitting will never die and it continues on forever. It's the same thing with spirit. Our energy never dies. It just continues on, just like the light of a star. So it is really that understanding that we never die, that it's just um, a different kind of existence and being open. Yeah. If you knew you would die soon, meaning losing the body, would you make any change in your life or do anything differently? I'd probably change my will. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good start. <laughs> uh, right. I think what I would probably do is I would, if I realized that my physical life was going to be cut short, I would immediately begin to act more spiritual. I would act more loving because the, we're always so focused on the now, well, actually, I should, I should rephrase that. We're not focused on now. We're always more focused on the, on the us, on the me, 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 on the, you know, I got to do this. I got to, you know, this pile of stuff I got to do. When in fact, we should be focusing our energies on everybody else. Focus on the love of everybody else. Focus on what can we do for other people? What can we do to 
help other people? What can we do to improve our planet in whatever way we can? That's what it's all about. That uh, inspired me to ask you another question. Do you think you would know as a psychic and medium when that time is about to come? Everybody knows at what point in time they're going to transition to, I'd say, perhaps several days in advance. There are, or in some cases, it could be even longer. Mediums may have a sense, uh, perhaps more so, just because we're more attuned to the spirit world. But I don't believe that spirit's going to come to us and say, oh, by the way, you know, you're, you, you got three days left yeah. because that would interfere in our timeline. It would interfere in our life. And one thing that we do know is that spirit is not ever allowed to interfere in our life in any way, shape or form, yeah. especially by, you know, giving future events or suggestions. Uh, it's, it's just not part of it. Universal law prevents that. So my last question to you, what are three things about life you know for sure as of now? I know I could be living a better life as a human. I know my consciousness will live on. And I know that my loved ones in spirit still exist and love me. And I should try to better honor them by doing the same. Thank you so much, Chris, for your authenticity, for your message, your mission, and sharing your wisdom. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. One last question. Where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Well, sure. If people want to give me a phone call, they can reach me uh, at 201-578-6020. Or if they want to drop me an email, it's chris at montclairmedium.com. Or if they want to take a look at uh, my website, it's www.montclairmedium.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much again, and we'll talk soon. Great. Bye for now, Chris. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Chris Lippincott and his work, please visit montclairmedium.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.